Hey guys, this is a post-production pie with srlounge.com. Alrighty guys, so we're ready to move on to the color correction setup tutorials in our basic processing chapter. But before we get to that, I did want to talk about what we kind of reference as the five rules of color correction. Now, I have selected exercise file 1-2, which is our same little birdie here, and uh, we're going to use him to kind of talk through this. So number one, the first rule of color correction is to make sure that you've actually color calibrated your monitor. And to do this, you need to buy a color calibration device. At least that's the way that we do it. Now in our studio, we use the Spider Pro and Elite devices uh, just because we've had a great experience with them. They work really well for monitor monitor and they give consistent results. Now, just because you've calibrated your monitor once doesn't mean you're done. Monitors have a tendency over time to become a little more dim. The colors might shift. So what you want to do is set up a calibration reminder to remind you every 30 to 60 days to recalibrate your monitor. This is going to give you the best results. Now, for those of you guys that are actually working on machines that are not calibrated, then you're probably going to see much cooler results or much more blue results than what we're getting from our tutorials. That's why a lot of times when we post images to SR Lounge, uh, people say, oh, I like the original better because the original was really yellow, and when they get it on their uncalibrated screen, it looks just right. But in reality, if you were to take that image and print it out, it'll be way too yellow. So make sure that you guys are calibrating so that not only on your screen do you see the right thing, but also when you print it, you're going to get a good representation of those colors. Number two, we would recommend using a high-quality, wide-gamut LCD or monitor when you guys are editing. Uh, using cheap quality displays is only going to kind of hinder the quality of your, your color correction and stuff like that. So we'd recommend sticking with, uh, you know, Apple displays or higher end Dell displays and kind of sticking to those major brand names. You guys can always, oh, Samsung's another good one, by the way. Um, what I would always recommend is purchase a display from a store that will allow you to return it within, you know, 14 to 30 days and calibrate that display and print out a couple images from it. Make sure that you're getting a good result, that you have a nice wide color gamut, and that you have good viewing angles on that monitor as well. Rule number three is to work in a semi-dark area. Now specifically that means you don't want to work in any area that has light directly falling on your screen. What happens is a, a very common issue that we have in our studio is that when we have staff going and doing post-production, they bring it back to the studio, which is a semi-dark location, and then we look at the images and they might be either too bright or too dark depending on where they were editing. For example, if you're editing in a very bright room, you're going to have a tendency to come out with images that are a little bit too bright because you're kind of compensating. You might not see how bright those images are because everything around you is so bright, specifically if there's light falling on your screen. If you're on the opposite side and you're editing in complete black in a pitch black room, then your images might come out as too dark because compared to the background and compared to everything else in that room, those images are already super bright. So it's good to edit your images in kind of a medium to semi-dark room without any light falling directly on your screen. Now rule number four is the processing order. We want to adjust images from their largest adjustments down to the smaller adjustments and not the other way around. And there's a good reason for this. In this image that we're looking at right now, exercise file 1-2, when we look at this image, the largest adjustment that needs to be made is the exposure. Now, if we adjust contrast or something else before we adjust exposure, it's going to be difficult to get a contrast level or to get a shadow level or a blacks level or clarity level that we want because we still haven't adjusted the major issues first, like exposure. So once we bring exposure up, then we realize, oh, well, maybe we want a little bit less or maybe we want more contrast than we originally had. So if you're working from smaller adjustments first, then what ends up happening is that you're going to end up revisiting a lot of the same sliders over and over uh, in the process because you're going to say, okay, now that I've adjusted my exposure, uh, contrast is incorrect and this is incorrect. So we always say work from the largest adjustments to the smallest adjustments. Now things like cropping and stuff like that, you guys can do that whenever. Typically we fix our crops and glaring issues first because they're kind of annoying to look at. And so a crop or something like that is kind of the first thing we fix. A rule of thumb is just start from the top and work down. Lightroom is already designed to basically work in this order, where you start with the most basic adjustments and just work your way through them, down to the tone curve, the details, lens corrections, and all that. So Lightroom's kind of already set up for that, for working from larger to smaller adjustments, and by following that workflow, you're gonna save a lot of time and rework in having to get your images to the right point. All right, now rule number five is to remember that color correction is subjective. Now, there may be a wrong way to color correct photos, and there is a wrong way to color correct photos, but there are also several different correct ways to color correct your photos, and this is all about style. 
We have to say this rule because a lot of times we get stuck in our heads that there might be only one way to do something. And specifically, when we have staff bring in their images that are color corrected, they might make artistic decisions that someone else might not make, but that does not mean that the images are incorrect or that they need to be redone. For example, with this image, we could brighten this up. And this is what you'd call probably the standard color correct version of this image. This is the most true to life version of the colors that we have right now. But we can also take this image and we can turn it into a mood shot. We can pull up the uh, temperature till it's really, really warm until it looks like it's kind of like a very warm sunset kind of dusk type image. We can also pull it down and make it super cool. So if we pull it down on this side, it's gonna look even more cool and more blues and stuff like that. Um, and it looks like kind of a winter type scene. Uh, we can turn it to a black and white. All these are different examples of correction and none of them you could say are incorrect. So that's one rule that we set, which is to remember that color correction is somewhat subjective. All right, we're gonna go back to our previous snapshot. All right guys, so we're done with our five rules. Hopefully you guys remember these and hopefully they're of use to you guys. Let's move on to the next tutorial.